Good morning, everyone. It's January 10th, and I'm glad you're here with me. <clears throat> I'm, going to do a, I'm going to do a little devotional on this Sunday. Uh, we're still locked down, and we're not going to be back probably till the end of January, if then. I'm not sure what the uh, expectations or the rules or what the government of Ontario will uh, tell us we have to do. But for right now, we're all locked down and uh, trying to do our best to stay safe, and I hope you are staying safe staying isolated from people and doing your best to uh, not get uh, COVID-19. If you look behind me, you'll see this uh, picture frame. The picture frame is uh, a copy of a flag we had here at our church. And the flag is um, one of the fifth, it's the fifth church that the Salvation Army opened in Canada. And this flag, I'll get out of the way. You'll see it there. It's the fifth flag, and so when uh, several years ago when they found it here in the church, they made a copy of it, a print of it, and they sent it off to our archives, and uh, that's what it looks like. It's kind of cool. You see the British emblem uh, up in the corner. It's when we were a British colony, I guess. And to the left and right, uh, you might not be able to see them, but one is, uh, this is Catherine Booth here, and this is William Booth here. You can't see their faces, but uh, that's in the room I'm doing this recording in. Well, I'd, again, I'd just like to welcome you here. And as I do this uh, little uh, podcast or whatever you want to call it, this little recording, I just want you to feel welcomed. And I hope that um, what I'm talking about today will give you some encouragement and some hope. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about today is uh, what we pursue in our life and uh, how important it is to pursue, pursue the right things. As church leaders, we're often uh, told words and, and, and phrases and stuff, and sometimes we don't know what they mean. You know, one of the things I've been asking around the church here for my staff is uh, this one question, what does a relationship with God mean? We, we always hear this from the church leaders. You need to have a relationship with God. What does it mean, though? To have a relationship with God. You know, I agree that we do need a relationship with God, but I wonder how many of us really know what a relationship with God looks like, especially when we know He is invisible. We can't physically see Him. He is unknowing. We can't really know Him other than read what we hear, read in the Bible. And we don't speak directly, we don't hear directly from Him. We don't hear His voice uh, speak to us. So it's hard to know what a relationship with God is. Is about well this morning I'm going to talk about a very important word which is called proximity you all know that when we want to develop a relationship a special relationship relationship with a, a friend or a, a girlfriend or a, our spouse or a neighbor proximity always matters it matters because being close to someone fosters a deeper stronger relationship so it's obvious to me that if we want a closer relationship with each other, and more importantly with God, proximity matters. Because the closer we are, the better the relationship. And you know this to be true. But what about those relationships where we aren't close in proximity? You know, my family, most of my family lives in Nova Scotia or out west, and so I don't have the proximity with them, but I still want to be around them. I still care about them. So what happens when we want to have a, a relationship with somebody who isn't close, who is not around our area? We've all heard the phrase that absence makes the heart grow fonder. And to some extent, I think that's true. After all, I know when I'm apart from my spouse, whether it's a short time or a long time, my heart seems to ache a little more. And I find the longer we're apart, the more I grow to appreciate our relationship. And I can't wait until she returns home. And I suspect many of you are the same way. Soldiers can also uh, speak about this because when they're, when they're called up to do active duty, the distance and absence from their home and family can cause their hearts to ache for their families and their home. Sometimes absence will strengthen a relationship with their loved ones. And that's not always true. Sometimes absence or longer absence causes problems too. 
So there is some truth to the idea that distance can benefit a relationship, but I don't think the dis that distance benefits a relationship with God. Here's the thing. When it comes to our relationship with God, with Him, distance, our absence, does not strengthen the bond. Distance from Him has the opposite effect and can cause our heart to go cold. Distance does not make our hearts grow fonder for God. In fact, distance will always make God less important in our lives. Then when He becomes less important, we stop going to Him. I guess the question I want to ask you is this. What causes this distance from God in the first place? Well, I think there are many reasons, and I'm sure you could come up with many. But maybe you're a single parent who, by necessity, must pour all your attention and care into your children. And there's, a, there's not a lot of time left for God at the end of the day. Maybe you have a new relationship that you're pursuing, and all your time and energy gets invested in that person, which leaves very little left over for God. Or maybe that new relationship is pulling you away from God because it's leading you to do things that you know is wrong. Maybe you're taking care of a parent or a sick spouse and you have very little time for yourself, let alone time for God. Maybe you're working so hard day in and day out to support your family that by the time you come home, you are exhausted. And all you want to do is lay down and rest and have a bite to eat. You're just worn out. You're just too worn out to pray to read his word, or even think about him. You see, we might not be intentionally trying to create distance between us and God. It's just that with the frenzy and frenzy and situations of everyday life, it can happen. Another area that can cause distance is sin. Now, obviously, that is one area we all uh, have problems with. And we may be doing things that are sinful, and it, it creates a distance between, between us and Him. Because of sin in our life, our relationship with God feels awkward sometimes, doesn't it? We go to Him and say, God, forgive me again for the same sin I do day in and day out. And it just seems awkward to go to Him. So we might not have that relationship with Him anymore. We start to believe maybe He's mad and disappointed with us. And now we have created even more distance. We don't go to him at all because we're embarrassed, hurt, and just feel awkward. So how do we correct this distance? How do we fight the gap that can grow within our relationship with him? How do we stop the feeling of failure and distance? The good news is that the Apostle Paul wrote something about this very problem. He reminds us of what God's heart is like, what his character is like when we find ourselves distant from him. In Romans 2, Paul was teaching the Roman church about God's character. In the first part of his letter, Paul focused on how all people are sinners and sin can put distance between us and God. But Paul says no matter the cause of the distance, God's heart is always the same. He wrote this, Don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? How many of us really think that God is kind, tolerant, and patient with us? Sure, when we're doing good things, we might think He is kind and tolerant and patient, but what does He think of us when we make poor choices in our life? What does He think of us when we sin? What we might think is that He is angry or disappointed in us. But Paul says that's not true. We need to understand what we need to understand is that during our sin, God is always kind, tolerant, and patient. You see, it's the opposite of what we think He's feeling toward us, especially when we're distanced from Him. Remember, God wants to be close to us, and He desires a relationship with us. But here's the the important thing we need to remember: this relationship doesn't hinge on what we've done. His love and kindness toward us is not conditional. In fact, he loves us so much that he sent a son to die so that there would never have to be any distance between us and him. So if we feel like God is mad at us because of what we have done, we need to know he still loves us. If we feel like we're too far from God, we need to know he wants to be close to us. If we feel like we've messed up too much and 
and, and any hope of a relationship with him is impossible. We need to know that God has a ma- an amazing plan for our life. So if we feel like God's mad at us because of what we have done, we need to know he still loves us. If we feel like we're too far from God, we need to know he wants to be close to us. If we feel like we've messed up too much and we don't have any hope for a relationship with, with him, we need to know that God has an amazing plan for our life. The thing is, we may not know what that plan is because it's beyond anything we're currently imagining, but he isn't keeping score of all the ways we've messed up our life. He isn't ashamed of us, and he isn't brainstorming ways to pay us back for every bad thing we've done. The reason is because he is always kind toward us. He is always tolerant with us, and he is always patient with us. If he wasn't, he wouldn't have sent his son to die on the cross for us. If he didn't care, he wouldn't have done that. But he cares and loves us, and so he is always patient, always kind, and always tolerant. Paul made this very clear in Romans 2 and 4. He says, can't you see that this kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? You see, God wants the distance between us and him to go away, no matter what's the reason behind the distance, whether it's sin or it's just life gets in the way. God's kindness, tolerance, and patience is for the purpose of getting us to turn from our other pursuits, the things that draw us away from him in life, pursuits that are causing us to be distant from him. God wants us to turn to him. Paul reminds us that if we've gotten distracted and begun chasing something that's not part of God's plan for our life, the only thing we can do is to turn and go the other way, to turn to him. However, just because he's always kind and tolerant and patient should make us feel good about our sin. After all, he's not saying, oh, you sinned, it's okay. No, instead, Paul said God's kindness is intended to turn us from our sin. See, it doesn't matter how distant we are, how much we've sinned, or how bad our decisions have been, or how far away we've drifted, or how long we've been gone away. He says, I want you back. I want a relationship with you. He wants us to be who he created us to be, and that can only happen when we turn to him and we pursue him. So we all need to stop moving away from God and move toward him. And know that God isn't mad or disappointed in us. After all, he loves us unconditionally. You see, God knows who we are. He knows what we're doing and what we have become. However, we'll never experience the life he wants us to have if we continue to move away from him. So let me ask you, what would it look like for you and I to turn away from the things we're chasing after and walk back toward him? What would it look like for us to say, God, I focus so much on my work, my plans and my ambitions. I focus so much on worldly things that I've forgotten about you. What if today we all said, I want to pursue you? What would it look like for all of us to say, God, I've pursued a direction that has caused distance from you, but now I want to pursue you. Yes, God is kind, gracious, and patient, and this extends to all of us. So maybe we should set aside our fears and our insecurities and move toward him. After all, many of us have walked away from God for far too long and chased after the wrong things in life. Every moment of the day, God is making it possible for us to change our course, and he is inviting us to pursue him. And yes, we need a relationship with God, pursuing him and moving closer to the one who wants to be close to us. And we do do that by reading his word, being in prayer, gathering together as best we can to worship him and worship him throughout our day, keeping him on our mind throughout our day and doing our best not to sin. I thank you for listening to me this morning and I just uh, ask you to continue to seek out God because he's there waiting for you. And I pray your week goes well, you stay safe and healthy 
and that this pandemic will go over and pass us very quickly. And let's have a moment of prayer. Father God, I just thank you for the people who have, will hear, hear this. I thank you for the opportunity for me to speak into their life. And I ask your Holy Spirit just to descend upon them and be gracious to them and hold them close. Let them know that you are real to them. Let them feel your presence and to know that you are the most important thing that they can have in their life. You will strengthen them, give them peace, and encourage them along their way. I pray you keep us safe. Watch over us. I pray for those who are sick and hurting, those who are lost and lonely. I pray for those in the hospital who are fighting COVID. I pray for our first responders. I pray for all of our staff who are keeping our food banks going and our family services going. I pray for each and every one of us that you may come upon our life and draw us close to you. Father, I ask this in your Holy Son's name. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining with me this morning. Uh, just put a like or a comment below. It would be appreciated. And so I know that you're there listening. And uh, it's encouraging to see uh, people leave comments and likes. And I just ask you to uh, stay safe and uh, watch out for each other. Goodbye.